good. So now, can you remember the last day code that we uh, implemented? I will go to this one. So this is the digit that we have. Uh, I mean, this is the this is the code that we trained last time. So at the end, I'm going to do a important thing. I'm going to get a library called joblib. Uh, probably you may have to install this. Right, so how you can install this joblib library? I'm not sure whether it is coming uh, inbuilt or not. So otherwise, what you can do is uh, you can install it simply. Right, uh, go to Anaconda prompt. Right, and this is how you can install any library you want, external libraries to Python. Pip install joblib pip install doblib, just open the anaconda prompt and uh, install it using pip install joblib. Right? Uh, it's all ready there in my uh, environments, but uh, if you, I'm not sure whether it's coming or inbuilt or not, but uh, better you can uh, try this in your anaconda prompt and you can get confirmed whether it's there. Okay. So then you can, after installing it, you can import the joblib library. And this joblib library is a very useful library where you can use it to save these algorithm. I mean, save, save these train models, right? So I'm going to save this as KNN handwritten digits. Right, KNN for handwritten digits. Dot SAV. Dot SAV, and uh, I'm going to save this model. Right, so this model, the train model, I'm going to save it to a physical file. Now this is very interesting, that we have. Uh, trained a machine learning algorithm, we have evaluated it and we know that it's giving like 98% accuracy. Now what we are going to do, we are going to save it to a physical file. So it's like, okay, so getting a copy of your brain. And so your brain has the knowledge. Now this algorithm has the knowledge of uh, identify hand, identifying handwritten digits. So we are going to take a physical copy of that model into a physical file. So they say we, uh, format is used to psychic, to save the scikit-learn models. So whatever the scikit-learn uh, a model that you are you have trained using the scikit-learn library, uh, you are going to use the SAV extension. That's the file type, and uh, then you can give the model that you want to save and the name of the file that the model should be saved. Right. So just running this. Uh, Sorry, it should be dump, not save, dump, right? So the train model, now, when you are going to use it in the that uh, PC application, that digit recognition application, no need to train it again. So we have trained it in a different fold, different uh, code, right? We have trained it in a different code, and uh, what we have just did was, we save it to a physical file. We save it to a physical file called KNN handwritten digits. Right? Understood. So you can use the joblib library for that. Okay. So now, uh, shall we start to the, shall we go to the uh, application and uh, just create the PC application? Model is not defined. I think you have run the whole code again. The whole code should be executed right the, execute the whole code and it at the end include this one or else uh, here if you have uh, check whether if you have used it as model if you have used it as algorithm right so if you have used it as algorithm here right then you have to save the algorithm Whatever the name you have used here, we have to use it here, right? Okay, so uh, GUI for 
So if you have any issues, please ask, right? Okay, let's see, we have another question. Okay, great. Right, so now uh, for this implementation, we are going to use uh, Tikinter. So what do you mean by Tikinter? Uh, Tikinter is the inbuilt Python graphical user interface developing library, Tikinter, right? So uh, Tikinter is a very useful library and we are going to use it for graphical user interface development. So the standard library coming for Python, no need to install it separately. It's, all, it's in, already there with Python. Since it's a standard library, uh, it will be there. So Tikinter will be used to create our graphical user interface. And uh, so the graphical user interface will look something like this that uh, the, right? So we have a canvas and we have four buttons, right? And we have the uh, prediction here. So this is what we are going to uh, develop, right? So we will first get the, so meanwhile, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask, right? I will uh, start developing the, uh, the, GUI, right? So I'm going to import the Tikinter library as TK, right? And then uh, first, what we have to do when you are going to create a graphical user interface uh, in Tikinter, you have to cre create the main window, right? So the main window could be created like this, right? Uh, Tikinter dot TK, right? So we have a question. Let's see. Can I uh, do this in a no? Yes, you, you can. Uh, so no need to do it in the Anaconda. You can do it in a normal .py file as well. It's fine, right? So then uh, I have created the main window. So this is how we are going to create the main window. Right? And I will run this uh, application win.main window. Sorry, uh, main loop. So if you can run this, you will see this kind of output. Let me uh, quickly show you the output. All right, so can you see now? Uh, Let me quickly change this view so then you can uh, see it, right? So, so you can see this is the main window that created. Just a window, right? A window. We haven't added any button, so we haven't added anything. Just a window, right? Understood? Yes, uh, the Tikinter again. So you are asking to uh, explain it again. Uh, Tikinter is a library, a module uh, we can use for uh, developing graphical user interfaces or PC applications. A GUI library, right? And this is the GUI library for Python, the standard GUI creating library for Python. We have some other uh, PyQt, right? Likewise, we have several other algorithm. I mean, several other uh, GUI creating libraries for Python, but this is a standard one. That means this is provided by the developers of Python, right? Okay, right. So this is how we are going to create a main window. So we have created the main window. Now what we need to do is we have to add this canvas. So this is a canvas and uh, uh, this is this our button so we need to now add these things into our uh, window right so let me apply uh, or let me uh, get the canvas first right so i'm going to create a canvas object canvas equal tk dot canvas tkinter dot canvas so we have to provide several parameters here. 
first parameter like we have to mention where this canvas should be placed so it should be placed in the main window right the first parameter is where we need to place this canvas right so it should be placed in the main window and then we have to provide the width right so let me uh, provide the width and the height w and height so let us uh, uh, have uh, 500 500 so width i'm going to provide as 500 and the height you have to provide the canvas the height of the canvas h and uh, then uh, the background color of the canvas so the background color should be white let's use as white right so these are the uh, so you can provide some other parameters but these are the main parameters that you need to provide the width height and the background color so in order to create the canvas can you uh, can you guess we need to provide some very important parameter here what's the other parameter to be provide so we have given the width height and the color so what's the other important parameter yes any can anyone guess okay we have answers the uh, but no no i'm asking okay so we have created the canvas so in order to finalize the canvas we need to provide some other parameter as well the font color no yeah that would be another one but the main one is yes exactly now we need to place this canvas in the window the main window so that could be done using uh, several uh, methods but i will use uh, the grid method so we have three methods of geometry that means placing objects we can use three methods uh, pack place and grid so grid is uh, the easiest method now the thing is i will provide you a tutorial for the ticket at the end of this uh, session so, so it contains some examples and it contains some notes so you can refer the if you want to learn more about ticket you can refer that uh, set of codes uh, and also you can refer that uh, pdf i will provide them at the end of this uh, uh, session right uh, but for now let's focus on uh, how we can uh, develop this simple uh, application so you have to provide the column number and the row number right the column number and the row number so if you run this one now you will probably see that uh, we have uh, this kind of a canvas in our right uh, you can see that we have this kind of a canvas in our uh, main window right a canvas in our main window okay so now we have to add uh, buttons one by one so let us quickly uh, go to the button one so the first button would be the save button so let me define it like button save so i'm going to create the button save object tk dot button uh, and uh, it's placed in the window and then we have to provide the text of the button text of the button save and thereafter background background is green the foreground is white so you can uh, either you can give the color code the hexadecimal color code or you can even you can give it in the as a string the color can be given as the string so then you have to provide the font right so i will provide the i will define the font here uh, like font button font button so let me uh, define the button font like this uh, you can use any font available in word or some other uh, the usually uh, used font you can use so you have to give the name of the font 
uh, name and then the size and then bold italy co underline right so you can give it like this font name size and uh, bold italy co underline you can give it here right so then i will provide the font as this right. so now uh, if you want to see the colors So these are the set of uh, Tikinta supported colors. Uh, you can see. Uh, not clear, right? Yeah, here. Snow, goat, ghost white, white smoke, old blaze, powder, like gray, light yellow, light yellow, four, right? Sea green. So you can just provide this name and you can obtain that color right for example uh, yeah so let let's uh, so if you go yeah let's uh, light sea green right so what i'm going to do light sea green light sea green okay so uh, let me provide the button uh, There, there. We have to place the button, so we will place the button and uh, row one, column zero. Okay, we have a question. Yeah, so row one column zero so shall we run this and see right so you can see now this is in the that uh, c light c green color right so you can use the uh, the color name right okay good right so now uh, we have to get the second button so i will uh, get it copied and uh, it would be the predict button. So what I can do here is uh, button dot pred button predict. Uh, so row one, column one, and uh, predict. Right. So now you can see this is uh, not as we expected, right? So what we expected was something like this. So buttons are near to each other, right? But here it's not like that. So what's the problem to this one? Here you can see, now you have the canvas. So canvas was there in the row zero, column zero, right? And the button, the save button is in uh, row one, column zero. Now this will be taken as the column zero size, right? So this will be taken as the column zero size, see? So everything will be this size. Whatever the things that you are going to include in the column zero will be in this size, right? So that's why this predict button is somewhere, somewhere here, somewhere else, right? So what we can do, we can get this uh, sorted. We have to provide the parameter. That means we have to say, okay, under the canvas, we have four widgets, four but or four not buttons, but four objects will be there in, in under the canvas. So in that case, we have to provide this parameter called column span. Column span four. Right. So now it understand. Okay. Under the canvas, we have to place four objects. So then it will uh, do it like this. Now it's fine, right? Okay, so let us quickly add the other buttons as well, other two buttons. So they will be clear and exit. Button clear and button exit 
Uh, sorry. Clear. So you'll use the gold color here and uh, exit. You can use the red color. So the columns should be changed. Zero, row one, column three, likewise. Now uh, it's uh, here as we expected. Save, predict, clear, exit. Right? Save, predict, clear, exit. Okay, good, right? Understood. Now, nothing happens yet. Right? We are write the functionalities. Nothing happens yet, even uh, in the canvas, nothing, uh, right? Nothing is drawing here, right? So we have write the functionalities. We just create the, uh, the structure, the, 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 the UI, right? We haven't write the functionality yet. So nothing works. Okay. So finally we have to add this uh, label. So this is a label. Now we in the Tikinter we have uh, widgets. So you can uh, search about Tikinter widgets. Right. So we have several Tikinter widgets. Right. Buttons, labels, canvas. Combo box, check button, red button, entry, frame, message, scale, scroll button, menu. So there are lots of uh, right available widgets, right? Pack, grid, play. So from this, we have we are going to use the canvas. We have used buttons, and now we are going to use labels, right? So these are the other uh, widgets available in Tikinter, right? Okay. So you can easily find these tutorials in, I mean, for ticking the kind of things, you, you always find tutorials. So I'm not, I mean, our main focus is not about ticking. Our main focus is about uh, machine learning, right? So you can learn these things anyway. I mean, this ticking and everything. Okay, so let's add the label at the end. Uh, so I will uh, define it here, label status. Uh, label status, so it would be a tk dot label. And uh, it also placed in the window, the main window. And uh, we have to mention the text. Uh, so I'm uh, uh, writing something like this, predicted digit none. So this is what it uh, shows at the startup, predicted digit none. And then the background, I'm going to shake the background into white and the foreground the the yeah the foreground we can uh, change the foreground into foreground is like the font color right? uh, black right so then uh, the font should be provided font uh, i will uh, create a different font to the label so that will be defined as font label. Uh, the size would be a bit increased for the label. Right, so we can use uh, 24, size 24. Right, so the label should be then placed. Uh, right, the label status dot grid row two column zero and I'm going to apply that column span here as well. Okay, so uh, ah, here I have to provide the font. Right, so it's perfectly working now, right? So now what we have to do is, now we have to write the functionalities. Now it's not working, even the, the canvas writing is not happened, nothing happens when a button is pressed. So now what we have to do is, we have created the architecture, right, of the app, the 
all the widgets are placed now what we need to do is we need to write the functionality of each uh, object right you have to write the functionality of each object so first we will configure the canvas now nothing happens in canvas uh, so when you are going to write something nothing happens still so we want to configure it uh, like uh, when you are writing something it should be shown here in the canvas right so in that case what we can do we can use a bind function in tickinter canvas dot bind right. canvas dot bind so i'm going to bind the canvas with the b1 motion right. b1 motion and uh, then uh, once the b1 motion occurs i'm going to uh, call the event function like this event function let's say event function so this event function is basically a function that we need to create uh, so i will uh, uh, create it here So I'm just including an event here. So this is what happens. B1 motion. So canvas, I have bind the canvas for the B1 motion. So what do you mean by B1 motion? The button one, we have to uh, click the button and drag the button inside the canvas. Now this is canvas bind. That means we have bind the canvas. Nothing will happen when we are going to do anything with other widgets. Right? So if you are going to run this, you can see now, I I press uh, the button here, nothing happens, right? Nothing happens. But when I'm going to drag it, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, now uh, in the event function, we have to provide some other uh, parameters as well, the event here. I will explain what this event is. Now see, uh, nothing happens when I'm going to press the button, but once I press the button inside the, press and drag the button inside the canvas, it's going to print event, 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 event. That means what? B1 motion. So what do you mean by B1 motion? When I'm going to drag the, press the button and drag it inside the canvas, this calls this event function, right? This calls this event function. So B1 is the, uh, the the left button. B2 is what? B2. B2 is what? Yes. B2. Anyone? Idea? B1 is the left button. B2 will be what? The middle one exactly the the scroll button the scroll button not the right button it will be the scroll button we have when you are going to press the scroll button uh, that would be the so b3 would be the right button right the right side button right so this is not the yeah right so this is not the uh, right this is not only done with the motion right so you can uh, Check for the bind function, tick into bind events, tick into bind events. Right. So button one, button one is when button one is pressed. B1 motion is button moved, button release, double pressing, right? Entering, leaving. So we have lots of event functions. So you can. Uh, search about ticking the event functions, but uh, I'm not going to do it now. I will only uh, use the uh, B1 motion. So if you are interested, you can search about these bind functions and learn more. Right? I'm not going to go into the deep in this ticking test since that's not our focus. Our main focus is about uh, machine learning, right? So you can, I just say, I, I just show you the resources so you can go there and uh, search about these things and learn more, right? 
since graphical user interface development is not our main focus today. Okay, so now you know what happens here. When uh, we are going to move the button, button pressed and move the button inside the canvas. So we have bind the canvas. So the button movement inside the canvas will only, only, only will be detected here, not the other movements. If you are going to move the button, I mean the mouse button pressed and move it inside the canvas, then only this event function executes. Otherwise, nothing happens. So we have bind the canvas, not the buttons or any other labels or anything. Right? So even simply, you can bind the label. It's fine. Now, let's see. Uh, so now see now what nothing happens and I'm going to do something inside the canvas but if I do something inside the label now it happens right right so likewise you can bind any object but here we are binding the canvas right okay so now this event this event gives us the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the mouse pointer right so we can get the x coordinate uh, using this event object this event object contains the x coordinate and the y coordinate so we can get the x y coordinate like this right so if you print the x and y you can see uh, the readings of x and y So see, so now can you see now when I'm not going to change the X coordinate, the X coordinate remains same, right? see? So when I'm going to change the Y co X coordinate and X coordinate fix and Y coordinate, you can see it like this, right? So we are getting the X and Y coordinates once the mouse is dragged in the canvas, right? So we have the X and Y. Now what we need is actually we need to write the digit like this. Write the digit like this. So what we are going to do. Now don't think that once you are going to get a canvas, this functionality is not automatically there. The drawing functionality is not there. We have to develop it. Right. So how we are going to do it. I'm going to get the X. And so X will be something like this. Now you know that uh, here we have the geometry like this X and Y. So we are going to get a point like this. So this is X and this is Y. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to uh, get X1, like X1 minus 30. Sorry, not X1, X and Y1, Y minus 30. And similarly, uh, x2 y2 right so now what i'm doing here simply i'm taking uh, two points so x2 x1 y1 y2 So I'm getting these four points, x1, x2, y1, y2, by uh, with the 30 pixel difference, 30 pixels difference. So then I'm going to draw a ellipse, canvas dot create, sorry, create oval, create oval. And I'm going to provide these parameters, x1, y1 x2 and y2 and then we have to provide the color fill black yeah i, I will explain why i'm using 30 right so now uh, here what happens sorry uh,
Um, now it's working fine, right? Can you see? Now it's working fine, right? So what we are going to do here is basically I we are taking uh, once a mouse is dragged inside the canvas, we are getting the x and y, and I am creating x1, y1, x2, y2, and create a oval. Oval is simply a circle, right? Oval is sim simply a circle kind of a thing. Oval, right? Uh, so this 30 is what you can change it to 20. So changing this changes the thickness of the. Change in thickness, right? It's just change the thickness. So you can right? see. So thickness can be changed here. So 30. Uh, I have tested 30 would be the best. Uh, yeah, 30 would be best. So what we are doing here simply is creating this kind of a oval at the mouse point. Right. So when when you are going to drag it, you can see these kind of ovals are creating. Right. So you can uh, clearly see this if I right see. Now I just uh, dragged it with the high speed. Right. But if you go with a very slow speed, so you can't see this kind of uh, individual objects. But if you go in a very speed, you can see this kind of uh, different object. So actually what happens here, it is creating, right? So this creates, uh, this creates, this creates individual ovals, right? This creates individual ovals. But since we are going in a very slow speed, we can't say that in the individual uh, ellipse or ovals, we can see like a continuous continuous uh, drawing is happened here. Right? Understood. Okay, so that's pretty much everything. Now uh, canvas is created now, so we have to create the button functions. Right? But we have another issue here. The issue is that uh, the canvas, actually the canvas, we can't uh, convert this canvas object into a image, right? So that's a major drawback here. Now, what what we need is now we need to have this kind of an image, right? So we need to have this kind of an image, and we need to flatten it and get the prediction, right? But thing is, now this canvas object. Now we are drawing it inside the canvas object. Somehow we need to convert this into an image, so. But uh, what happens here is that that cannot be done since the tickinter canvas object cannot be directly converted into an image. So we can't use this method. But we can use this method to show this uh, drawing to the user. Right? So the problem is that I mean somehow we need the image. But here we have a canvas object in tickinter. The issue is we can't convert the <laughs> there is no any method to convert the canvas object into an image, right? So in this case, what we are going to do, we are going to show this to user. Okay, user will see that there is a nice little drawing. They are in the canvas, right? So the nice little drawing. They are in the canvas, right? So what happened? The canvas. Uh, the user sees the canvas, but we are we are keeping a different image object. We are keeping a different image object. To draw the image, uh, draw another separate image there. So what happened? When user uh, draws a digit, that will be drawn in the canvas. At the same time, it will be drawn in the image. Right? At the same time, we are going to do this. So the user sees the canvas, but for the prediction, we are going to get that image. Since the canvas object is, since the canvas object cannot be directly converted into an image, right? So we are having two objects, the canvas object and the image object. So the drawing will be done simultaneously in both the objects, right? User sees the canvas, we are using the image to get the prediction and show the output to the user, right? Okay, 
so in that case we need to get another uh, important library called pillow right so the pillow library and the pillow library again as i mentioned you can uh, uh, it is not coming as a default library so what you can do is uh, you can install it using uh, pip the python package installer pip install pillow right so you can use this pillow library so this pillow library is used to uh, the usage of the pillow library is to uh, draw that image right draw that image object get that image object so we can include it here from pil i'm going to get uh, the image tk these are some functions image tk image and image draw Okay. All right. So you need another library, the OpenCV library. Now, don't worry, we will uh, discuss about the OpenCV library uh, in a coming day. But today we will use a simple, I mean, we will apply the OpenCV library for simple application. So you have to use, in, install that as well. The OpenCV library is uh, the best open source level available, open, the open source library. For the module available for image processing task, right? OpenCV, the best open source library for Python for image processing task. So you can install it using OpenCV dash Python. Uh, just uh, run this in your Anaconda prompt and it will install the OpenCV library for you. Uh, so that those are the libraries that we need. And uh, so the pillow library, I'm going to take it. So Sim at the same time, when we are creating a oval in the canvas, I'm going to get another object, uh, image object, and draw the same image in the image object. Right. Uh, so I'm going to create an image object. Right. Okay. I will go get the command back. Pip install open CV. So shall I? Uh, uh, share it in the chat. And the other thing is pip install pillow. Okay. Sorry, uh, I have to send it to everyone. Okay. Uh, Sorry, uh, other one is below. Right. Okay, so the image object, I'm going to create the image object, uh, the image dot new. So I'm going to create a RGB image, RGB image. And uh, the size, we have to give the size then, W and H. So what do you mean by W and H? Can you remember we have declared W and H as the width and the height. So I'm going to create a new image. Now this this fun, this uh, method is here, right? So you can see this is what we taken from the pillow library image. So we are creating an image object W H, and uh, then you have to provide the color of the image. So two five five two five five two five five. That means white background is there. White background is there. Uh, here there is another thing. Uh, uh, right, so now can you remember? the digits that we have used, right? So the digits that we have used, so can you remember that the color, the background was black, the foreground was white. Can you remember? But here what happened? In the canvas, white background, black background. 
sorry, black foreground, right? White background and white, white background and black foreground. So what we need to do uh, here that uh, the, I mean, the user, yeah, user fine, user is fine. So user can see white background and back, black background, but we are using this image to get the prediction. So in the image, we will create a black background and a white foreground for the image. Now this image will be used to get the prediction on the machine learning algorithm. So in that case, we will use a image uh, with white, sorry, black background and white foreground, right? So I'm going to create a, now, this is the image that we are going to use for the prediction, but uh, we need to create another object called image draw. This will be used to draw the draw, uh, whatever the things that we are drawing in the canvas in this image. So this image draw object is to, is used to draw the, uh, content in the image object, right? So you can take it image dot, sorry, image draw dot draw, uh, ing. So this is the actual, uh, object that we are using to draw, but it is drawn in this image object, right? So we have two, we have a separate image object and object for drawing. So this is the image object that we are using for drawing, right? So what you need to do is uh, at the same time, right? at the same time you have to create, you have to uh, draw the same thing in the, uh, now in the pillow, now we are using two different libraries, right? Pillow library. So pillow library, there is no method called create over, but it has the same thing like ellipse. The same thing, but not create over. Now the canvas is something from the Tikinta library. Image draw is something from the pillow library. So pillow library has the method like ellipse, two different methods, but do the same thing. So we have to provide the uh, coordinates x1, y1, x2, y2 coordinates to draw this. All right. So then uh, we have to fill. We have to fill in white, not black. We have to fill it in white. So now the user sees white background, black foreground, but the prediction image actually it draws in the ba black background, white foreground, right? So simultaneously it draws in both the places, right? The both the places in the sense, uh, right? Both the places in the sense now the uh the canvas and the image object right okay right so now everything is done working fine perfectly everything now at the same time a image object is also created right white foreground and black background now we have to write the functionalities of this each uh, function each button sorry so how to write the functionalities you have to give the command here, command, right? Command save, right? So what you have to do, now this is the functionality of the button. So functionality of the button in the sense, this is a function, the save is the function and we have to define that function like this. Right? So pass is for empty function for now. So command equals save. So what happens when the function, I mean, when the button is pressed, what happens when the button save is pressed, this save function will be called, right? So for example, we can check it. Right. So shall we run this and uh, so you can see, right? 
So that means, okay, now we have configured what we have to do. We have to provide the command. So command is a function where we have to declare whatever the things we need to, whatever things needed to be done once the command button is pressed, right? So save button is basically to save the, right? The save button is, uh, they are to save the uh, image, right? Save the image that uh, we have drawn in the, we have drawn in the uh, canvas, right? So see how we can do it. Uh, so I'm going to get, uh, yeah, here. So first we have to convert that image into an array, that image object into an array. So we can take it like this. We can use the NumPy array, NumPy library. So you are not, if you are not aware about NumPy, NumPy is a library they are you to, used to like call numerical Python. Uh, we can do matrix operations using NumPy library. Uh, so you can use this NumPy library, numerical Python library, and convert it this image object into an array. Now you know that image images are what two dimensional object, two dimensional arrays. We discussed it in last time. So here, what we are doing is we are converting the image, that image object into an array, right? Image object into an array. Then, can someone? Uh, now we know that in order to apply this into the machine learning algorithm, can you see? Uh, this is kind of array, so we have to convert the image into an array. Right? We have to convert the image into an array. Right? So now, uh, the image, when you are converting this, we are using the NumPy library, the NumPy array method, and we are applying the image object converted from, uh, uh, created from the pillow, right? this image object into a NumPy array, a array actually. Right, so now we, we have an array. Now, can you guess the size of this array, the size of this image? Someone? Yes? Can someone guess the size of this image? We just declared it quickly. What's the size of the image? Yes, good, 500, 500. So, but we are using eight by eight. So what we have to do, we have to use the OpenCV library. We can use this OpenCV library, the OpenCV library. So we are importing the OpenCV library. I use OpenCV here uh, to reduce the size, right? So image array equals CV2 dot resize. So the CV2 dot resize OpenCV function to resize the image. Uh, so we have, we can apply this image array and we have to say the size that we need to convert it to. So eight by eight, right? eight by eight. Then what we can do is we can uh, save this uh, using the cv2 dot imwrite. cv dot imwrite uh, data str count plus dot uh, jpg right so here the file name file name is something like uh, uh, data zero dot 
jpg so i'm uh, creating a global variable called count count and i'm taking it here and uh, i'm saving the name uh, saving the image right saving the image the image array in the like 0 1 2 3 likewise and finally i'm increasing the count so once the save button is pressed first it will save the image as 0 jpg then the count will be increased to 1 so second time it will be saved as uh, one dot jpg likewise right but the thing is now you have yeah you have to create a folder called data right so first uh, please uh, create a folder called data here so then uh, let us run this and see what happens so i press the save once so you can see zero jpg right? eight by eight actually we can't see that much eight by eight image right and uh, so if i run it again now we haven't implemented the clear button yet so i will run it like this so this is the second one saved Likewise, this happens, right? Okay. Uh, so we have implemented the save button now. You can see that still we can't clear it. So the clear button is not uh, implemented yet. Exit button is not implemented yet as well. So exit button is a bit easy to implement. Uh, so exit button is very simple to implement here. So it will be like uh, the command should be provided as uh, win dot destroy win dot destroy win dot destroy destroy right. So then uh, exit button basically simply it exists once it pressed it exits. Okay, so everything is fine now. The clear button. Shall we clear the clear button now? Command clear. So clear, we have to define the clear function here. Right. So in the clear button, what we have to do simply huh? create the canvas, sorry, clear the canvas as well as create the, uh, sorry, clear the image object so what you can do is canvas dot delete all so this will delete everything in the canvas and we have to uh, uh, redefine the image like this so we can simply do it what you can do is we can redefine the image so we are redefining the image into black so the image will be also drawn and uh, yeah so that's it so both the canvas and the image objects are cleared see now it works fine right okay so this is what uh, i did in the clear simple right so then uh, what we can do is we can uh, go to the predict button the predict button uh, so I'm going to uh, create a function called predict. So this is the last thing that we need to do. Right. Uh, so in the predict button, what we need to do? Yes, yeah, someone. We need to get the machine learning model and get the prediction simply, right? Yes. So what we can do? 
we can load the machine learning model using the joblib library import joblib so you can remember that we saved the model in the earlier code right so we can load that model here uh, joblib.load right joblib.load so the model you can see its name the k nearest name knn hand in digit.sav so i'm going to get the name uh, so you can give the path here the path of the saved model right so what you have to do is uh, just get the model and get the prediction right okay good so we have load the model here right we have load the model here so this is a trained model to predict hand and digi hand written digits right so what we can do okay here uh, now we have to get the, uh, we have to pre-process the image before applying to the machine learning algorithm we have to pre-process it so these will be the first steps first we have to get the image and resize it right so can someone tell me okay what needed to be done then Actually, uh, we need to add another important thing. So can you remember that we declared this as a RGB image, right? I know that this is, I mean, black background, white foreground. But thing is, it's in the RGB format. That this image object is in the RGB format, right? It is in the RGB format. So you have to keep it in your mind, RGB format. So what we need to do is first, we need to convert it to the grayscale. Yeah, don't get confused here. I know that images looks like black and white, right? So we saw that image is like black and white. Here you can see they are black and white, right? Uh, images are black and white, but the format is RGB. Here we have created it as a RGB image. So here uh, we have to convert the RGB to gray. The format needed to be converted, right? So that should be done like this. It could be done like this. Image array. We have a function in OpenCV, CV2 dot uh, convert color, convert color. So we have to convert the image array, right? Image array, uh, and uh, we need to convert it into. We need to convert it into CV2 dot using. The color conversion we color conversion flag so this is called the color conversion flag cv2 dot color uh, color rgb to gray so we are converting rgb to gray right so then what happens this convert color function take the input image and it convert this is the color conversion flag so here we have like several color conversion methods like BGR to RGB, RGB to gray, right? BGR to gray, right? BGR to HSV, RGB to HSV, HSE to YUV, right? So the convert color conversion, the convert color function is there to uh, change the color spaces, convert the color spaces, gray to RGB, RGB to gray, RGB to HSV. So we have we can use this method to do lots of conversions but here today we are using it to convert rgb image to gray image right okay good so we have the gray image here and we are going to resize it to 8 by 8 right and we have the 8 by 8 image now can someone tell me we need to do some uh, another thing before converting this i mean applying this uh, image into the prediction 
I mean, we have to do it like this model dot predict, and we have to apply this image and get the result here, right? So that's what we need to do first, right? This is what we need to do. But before doing that, someone we need to do some uh, steps here. Can someone uh, guess them? So we have eight by eight image here. Yes. Yes, exactly. Good. Very good. Now we need to flatten the image, right? So we have eight by eight image. So we need to convert it to one comma 64, right? We need to convert it to one comma 64. Very good. Right? So we need to flatten. How? We can use the NumPy library. NP dot uh, reshape np dot reshape numpy library so the image array we need to convert it to uh, right. image array into 1 comma 64 1 comma 64 we are going to convert okay now it's already everything is done but we had we we, we miss one important point right i will go there and uh, show you the image array from the from a code that we did on last Sunday. So this is the image array. So can you see that the white, I mean the gray, gray, the gray, sorry, the black pixels are zero, it's fine. But the white pixels are like, uh, can you see now it's uh, 16, right? 15 or 16, the maximum value, right? 15 or 16, I mean like, it's like this, so. So what's the reason? Huh? So due to image compression, I mean, the image compression that they have used, they have used uh, like the images, the black, okay, zero, but the white pixels, 16, right? The white pixels, the maximum value is 16. So they actually they are using not a eight bit number, they are using a four bit number here. They are using a four bit number, not a eight bit number, a four bit number. So that means the range is not between zero to two five five, the range is between zero to 16, right? Zero to 16, understood, right? Actually zero to 15 here, I mean, yeah, zero to two five five. Not here, zero, the, so the training data, they were between 0 to 15, so 0 to 16, right? 0 to 16. But our image, right? Our image, what? Huh? So let me show you this. Let's uh, print this and see. See? Can you see? Now our images are coming between like zero to two five five. That's the standard. But in order, like the purpose of saving the space, they have saved it like a four bit number. But in our original this application, it's giving a uh, eight bit number zero to two five five. So what we need to do, since the training images are between zero to sixteen, right? Zero to sixteen. What we need to do? Right, the training images are zero to sixteen. So what we need to do? Huh? We also need to convert this images coming as zero to two five five. We need to convert it to zero to sixteen, right? Before getting the prediction. So, any easy method to do that? Convert uh, this to that. Yes, we can use the scaling. Very simple. See, I'm using a very simple method. So I'm dividing all the uh, 
right i am dividing all the dividing all the pixels from 255 now what happens huh? dividing it by 255 what happens now yes so what happens i am dividing all the pixels by 255 now what happens here okay so if you have digit 0 what happens 0 divided by 255 0 so if you have digit the pixel value 255 255 divided by 255 is 1 so this converts the image between 0 and 1 and then what we have to do just multiply it by 60 then what happens huh? then it converts between 0 to 60 first we are converting it to 0 and 1 and then 0 to 60 okay so that's pretty much everything then what we have to do is we have to then update the label right so i can update the label status label status dot config uh, label status dot config i'm going to update the text of this one like this I'm going to convert the string sorry the result into a string and show it here that's all that's pretty much everything so shall we run this and see um yeah sometimes it uh, gives different right uh, see um right um yeah, so I think uh, this should be converted between 0 and 15. Let's see. Um, yeah, some digits are not uh, taking correctly. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the seven is also not coming. Is it the case? Anyway, uh, yeah, some uh, issues with some uh, digits are there, but uh, other than that, it's working now. Can you identify uh, a reason for this issue? Huh? Some of the digits are not uh, recognizing well. Right. Some of the digits are not recognizing well. And sometimes it uh, recognize, but uh, some of the cases it's not. Um, uh, uh, 
so this should be like here can you see uh, we have a question image array equals here right image array you are, you missed the image is the equal sign you have missed Yeah, uh, so let me have another quick. Uh, I think there is an issue with our implementation. Anyway, let's see. Uh, let's try it again. Okay. Yes, it's fine. So it's two. Okay. So let us clear and uh, get another prediction. Ah, the image is not, uh, yes, so the image is not clearing, that's the issue I think. Um, Yeah, yeah, the image is not cleared at each prediction. That's the case. So this is the first one. And uh, this is the next one. Okay, so this is the third one. And the image is not clearing. So anyway, let me see. No, that uh, is not actually a issue uh, now. Uh, okay, so we have a question here that uh, here. Yeah, the image can you mean like this? Actually, yeah, uh, it is doesn't matter since uh, Python anyway convert it to a float since uh, the image array is a float, so it doesn't matter. Uh, now the issue is with uh, clear. Ah, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Now I have missed this. I have to say that I'm uh, changing the global image and the image row. So otherwise this is considered as a local image row and image. So that means the image is not cleared when I'm doing this. It's create another local object inside this clear. The global image and the image row remains the same. That's why. Anyway, now it will work fine. Um, let's see. Um, now we are getting a full black image, not um anyway let me try it again yeah yeah anyway i uh, okay this is okay Yeah, uh,
anyway give me a minute i will uh, configure this what's the issue uh, let's see okay so in the predict function something happens image we are converting it to image array convert color Okay, so we will try it again once. I think we can uh, get it clarified. Okay. Right. Okay, get it converting. Okay, after. Okay, so I think the issue with, is with the clear function, global image. Uh, 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 sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. Mm, image, image draw.
Ah, sorry. Yeah, so <laughs> this is the issue. Now, this is simple IMG, right? Not capital IMG, simple IMG. That's the issue. Okay, hopefully let's see. Good. Right. Right. Okay, great. Now, uh, yeah, the issue is with one simple capital issue, right? With an, here, you should do it like IMG, simple IMG. That's the issue. Okay, great. So now it's working perfectly. So you can uh, have a look, right? Uh, here, capital IMG. And uh, that's pretty much everything, right? Okay. Uh, so now this application is very useful. What you can do is can you now using this you can uh, create a data set as you want as well right here uh, you can now not for digit so let's say you are uh, handwritten uh, characters of your language like let's say Hindi right or Tamil right so you can create your own data set right just save right? just like let's say okay a save another a so let's say like we are we are uh, collecting hundred images for a right? right so what happens here so you will uh, get a data set for a right so hundred images so after that you can copy that set of images to somewhere else and start b c likewise you can create your own data set and you can train a machine learning alg algorithm like this and uh, like uh, you can do it for like, I mean the handwritten character recognition for Hindi can char handwritten character recognition for Tamil, right? So you can create a data set from here as well, right? Understood. Okay, so we will do some kind of that kind of application. I promised you last time that we will uh, in next coming Sorry. implementations, right? Next coming implementations, we will uh, implement uh, we will see how we can load our own data sets using Excel files, set of image data sets. So how to load our data sets and get predictions, right? So after that, you can uh, train this kind of a model for your language, not the digits, your language, right? But for uh, data set uh, collection, you can uh, do it like, do it using this application, right? Okay, so that's pretty much everything for today. And uh, we have, uh, develop this uh, graphical user interface for our handwritten digits application. So we trained it, Kenya's neighbor algorithm, we evaluated it, right? And we got the results and after that we use it in a practical application. We integrated it into a practical application. So here we have only two lines of machine learning code here, right? This one and only this one, right? But we did the training in a separate place and we got the trained model and we use it here. So that's how you can use it for your application.